with the release of Commander Masters, I wonder if there's any good decks to build right now. Decks that are gonna be powerful and inexpensive because of all the new reprints and just super fun. Hey everyone, my name's DJ. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel and there are gonna be plenty of amazing decks to build from the staples in Commander Masters. But I wanna talk about one that's gonna be particularly good and I think it's gonna be really inexpensive. I wanna talk about mono white equipment. Now, in order for me to convince you that this is the right deck to build from this set, let's take a look at all of the reprints from Commander Masters that are gonna make your mono white equipment deck really good. Now, at the time of recording, Commander Masters isn't even released yet, so the prices have not bottomed out. So I'm not really gonna be bombarding you with prices, but just know that all of these cards that I'm mentioning right now are gonna get way cheaper, especially because a lot of them are not the chase cards that everyone is the most excited by. Let's start off with the commander that I'm gonna pick to lead this deck. It's Balan Wandering Knight. Balan Wandering Knight is two white white for a 3-3 legendary cat knight with first strike. Balan Wandering Knight has double strike as long as two or more equipment are attached to it. One in a white, attach all equipment you control to Balan. Oh, so this was actually a pretty pricey card and the jumpstart reprint with cute cat ears uh, didn't actually do anything to the price tag, but now it's gonna get really cheap and Balan is gonna be super good because one of the hindrances of equipment is that pesky equip cost. You know, you want to augment your creatures, make everything big, but it takes all your mana to get a creature that's relevant. And then as soon as they kill that creature, you feel that big pressure on your mana again to re-equip. Balan gets around that. That way you can deploy your equipment at will, and then you play Balan and boom, suck up all the equipment onto it, and then suddenly you have a gigantic cat ready to attack, most likely with double strike and also most likely with haste because you're gonna make sure to run equipment with haste. So Balin can just come out of nowhere and take people out of the game. And that's the fun in these kinds of equipment decks. So let's actually look at that strategy. If we want to suck up all the equipment onto one creature and attack with it, well, it can be supported with another reprint from this set, one of my favorite cards, it's Heavenly Blade Master. Five and a white for a three six angel with flying and double strike. When Heavenly Blade Master enters the battlefield, you may attach any number of auras and equipment you control to it. Other creatures you control get plus one plus one for each aura and equipment attached to Heavenly Blade Master. So not only does this give you a huge anthem effect for your creatures already on the battlefield, this does something similar to Balin. It's gonna come down, it's gonna suck up all the equipment, probably get haste, it's gonna have double strike, it's gonna have flying and all this great stuff and smash in for tons of damage. And so having redundant effects in this deck is gonna be really good. And we're gonna continue with sucking up that equipment for free with Nahiri the Lithomancer. This is three white white for a three loyalty planeswalker Nahiri. Plus two, create a one one white core soldier creature token. You may attach an equipment you control to do it. Now this doesn't suck up all of the equipment onto that core soldier, but it could allow you to equip a really pesky piece of equipment and get it onto that soldier. Minus two, you may put an equipment card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. Uh, this gets around the casting cost of equipment, which could be really good, or getting that recursion going. And then minus 10, you create a crazy piece of equipment. Nahiri was actually pretty pricey, not really seeing a real reprint until right now. And it's just kind of a role player and equipment deck. So this is gonna get really cheap, really fast, and it's gonna slot in perfectly. Pure Steel Paladin is white white for a 2-2 human knight. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Metalcraft, equipment you control have equip zero, as long as you control three or more artifacts. A little bit redundant there. Uh, Pure Steel Paladin is great because it's got that free equip cost. You're gonna have plenty of artifacts and it's got the card draw on it. It's a really important piece of these kinds of decks. So these are the reprints that are gonna help me form the core of my deck, meaning I'm going to cheat equipment onto creatures. So I'm not gonna be as worried about equip costs and it's gonna make sure that my deck is focused on attacking and a little bit more streamlined. I also wanna talk about some more cards from this set that are equipment themed, so you know that you're gonna be able to fill out the deck a little bit more by getting some Commander Masters cards. Uh, Kemba Kaw Regent, uh, this is not a real Kemba deck where we stack up a bunch of equipment on it and create a bunch of cats, but if we happen to create a bunch of cats, that's fantastic. And then maybe we can play a Heavenly Blade Master and then pump all of those cats up. Kemba was never really expensive to begin with, but we've got a cool reprint with a cool cat face, so that's gonna be great. 
Skill Shaper's gift is fantastic. It's just a tutor for an equipment, and we will want the right equipment onto the battlefield because Balin gets really good when we have certain equipment on it. Now let's talk about some of the equipment reprinted in Commander Masters. We have Lightning Greaves. No matter how many times this has been reprinted, it's always above $5, and hopefully printed out on common in the main set, this price will go down like crazy. Now this was reprinted at Uncommon in Double Masters and it did dip down a little bit, but it rose back up again. So um, you might wanna pick up a copy. Sword of the Animist was a fantastic reprint. A lot of these decks are very mana hungry. I mentioned the mana investment to equip all of this equipment onto your commander or onto your creatures. And Sword of the Animist will be that ramp in white. Uh, Sword of the Animus used to be around $10. It's been reprinted a bunch of times, sitting around $750 right now. It'll get a little bit lower. Now, Commander Masters also has a bunch of equipment that I'm not super excited about. Some I won't even mention here, but I'm gonna mention two more because they're kind of good, even though I'm not thrilled about them. Uh, it's Champion's Helm. Hexproof can be some really good protection, uh, but I'm not thrilled about its $23 price tag right now. This has got to get a lot cheaper for me to consider getting it for my deck. Next, we have Hammer of Nizan. Four mana for a legendary artifact equipment. Whenever Hammer of Nizan or another equipment enters the battlefield in your control, you may attach that equipment to target creature you control. Equip creature gets plus two plus two, oh, and has indestructible. This will help us equip some of the other equipment, but at $15, it's, it's a little bit much. And then I'd like to mention some just really good white cards that would go well in this deck that are reprinted, but are not equipment themed. Flawless Maneuver was reprinted in this set. Protecting your board is gonna be really important. Grand Abolisher is fantastic in this style of deck because there's a moment where we're very vulnerable. We play Balan, we try to suck up all the equipment onto it, and we're hoping that it sucks up the Lightning Greaves or gets some protection from a Champion's Helm or something like that, and then someone kills it right out from under our big equip. Grand Abolisher prevents that from happening. Then we've got things like Path to Exile, Generous Gift. Generous Gift brought down to Common. It's gonna make sure that it's incredibly cheap, so pick those up. And then Smothering Tithe, this is a mana hungry deck, so getting a bunch of treasure is gonna be really good. So those are all the cards from Commander Masters that I feel are the core of a very, very good mono white equipment deck. And so let's find a few ways to support it. We talked about how powerful it can be to get equipments directly onto your creatures. So something like Sigarda's Aid is gonna be really good. We've seen this card be amazing in 60 card formats. It's also really good in Commander, uh, letting you turn your equipment into combat tricks. So Garda's Aid is one white mana for an enchantment. You may cast or equipment spells as though they had flash. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach it to target creature you control. So good. Um, it is a little bit expensive at $7.50. We got another enchantment just from Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth. It's Forge Anew. Um, they gave us some really solid um, equipment manners synergies in there. Forge Anew is two and a white for an enchantment. When Forge Anew enters the battlefield, return target equipment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. As long as it's your turn, you may activate equip abilities anytime you could cast an instant, and you may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost of the first equip ability you activate during each of your turns. Forge Anew does a little bit of everything. It's the Swiss Army knife that we need that supports the equipment strategy, and coming in at $2 is fantastic. Armored Sky Hunter is great because when it attacks, you get to look six cards deep. That's a lot. And find an aura or equipment card, put it straight on the battlefield, and equip it for free. Armory Automaton is three mana for a 2-2 construct, but when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can attach any number of equipment to it. Ardan Intrepid Archaeologist is only 30 cents, and at the beginning of combat of your turn, you may attach any number of orders or equipments you control to target permanent or player. Kemba costs just 20 cents and does a little bit of everything. When it enters the battlefield or another cat enters the battlefield under your control, you can attach up to one target equipment you control to that creature. Quick creatures get plus one plus one, and for five mana, you can create a 2-2 two -two cat. And remember, that cat will suck up an equipment if you want it to. Now, we've talked a lot about ways to get equipment onto your creatures, but we haven't really mentioned the equipment besides the ones that came in Commander Masters. What are the really critical pieces of equipment for this deck? Well, I think one of the best is gonna be Colossus Hammer. A single mana, equipped creature gets plus 10 plus 10 and loses flying and has a staggering equip eight. Ooh. This is coming in at $2.75, and with all of the free equip we have, we're gonna be creating a massive creature. And 
that this just raw power and toughness is gonna be super important for this deck. Another card that just gives some raw power and toughness is Black Blade Reforge. Uh, printed into Oblivion, this is also a card that you can get for about 25 cents. An equipped creature that gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. Uh, to equip to a legendary creature is three, but just normal equip is seven. But that's okay, because we have tons of ways to equip for cheaper, making your creatures gigantic. Argentum Armor is six mana, six equip. Equipped creature gets plus six, plus six, and whenever equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. Oh, big effect for a card that's just 65 cents. And of course, I don't think that you should run this card unless you have ways to cheat it onto your creature because six equip is just t a ton. But think of all the ways we have to suck this onto a creature, to put it on directly, to cheat it onto the battlefield, and then attack, destroy things, get something massive. I've got one last piece of equipment that is prohibitively expensive to get onto your creatures, and so it takes full advantage of that free equip we've got going on in this deck. Bloodforged Battle Axe is a single mana for an artifact equipment. A crypt creature gets plus two plus zero, oh, and whenever a crypt creature deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of Bloodforged Battle Axe. Uh, this is an effect that just builds and builds and builds. You get like two or three copies of Bloodforged Battle Axe, you suck them onto your Balin, suddenly it's got plus six plus zero, oh, and when it hits, it's gonna create three more. Just kidding, we've got double strike, it's gonna create three more card that creates tons of copies of itself, but it becomes really difficult to spend that two mana to keep equipping each individual copy, unless you have a way to cheat them onto creatures, allowing you to equip everything up and get that really great value. Bloodforge Battle Axe is being reprinted a couple times. There's a really cool version out there for just $1.75. All right, now you can customize this deck and put whatever equipment you want to it. Go into your binder, find the equipment you have, load it up. Um, and this is where you can go in a more budget route or a less budget route. Right now I'm gonna talk about five pieces of budget equipment, and then I'm gonna talk about five pieces of expensive equipment, and you can kind of pick and choose what fits best in your deck. Budget equipment, I gotta talk about Loxodon Warhammer. Really popular, only 20 cents. Loxodon Warhammer is three mana, three to equip, equipped creature gets plus three plus so, and has trample and lifelink. Next, we have Sword of Vengeance. Three mana, three to equip. A crypt creature plus, plus two plus zero. Oh, first Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. My budget line was around $3, and Calder Complete is coming in at $2.75. This is a seven mana equipment with Living Weapon, Indestructible. Equipped creature gets plus five plus five. Has First Strike, Trample, Indestructible, Haste. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a creature, exile that creature and has Equip Seven. Next up is Maul the Skyclaves. Two and white for equipment. When Maul the Skyclaves enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equipped creature gets plus two plus two, has flying and first strike. It has equip two white white. Then finally, I like Nettle Sis, three mana, uh, two to equip living weapon, equip creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and enchantment you control. All right, now for the more expensive pieces of equipment. Next up, I have a complement to Sword of the Animist. I have Bitterhorn, Nissa's Animus, and Sword of Hearth and Home. Uh, Bitterhorn is three mana equipment, three to equip, living weapon, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. And when equipped creature attacks, you may search your library for a basic land guard, put it on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. Sword of Hearth and Home is three mana, two to equip, plus two, plus two, pro green, pro white. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, exile up to one creature you own, then search your library for a basic land card, both both cards on the battlefield under control, then shuffle. Ramping is so important in Commander, and so having pieces of equipment that keep pulling lands out of my deck, getting them on the battlefield so I can do more later in the game is, is pretty important. Now I mentioned Sword of Hearth and Home. The Swords of are just really good. I mean, if you look at them, Sword of Fire and Ice, uh, $45. Plus two, plus two, pro blue, pro red, deals two damage, you know, draw a card. And that's, it's really good. And this is when it hits. And so when you have cards that have double strike, like Balin and Heavenly Blade Master, uh, the Swords of get really, really good. But $45 is so much. Maybe let's focus on uh, Sword of Forge and Frontier. This is only $10 and it's got pro red, pro green. When it deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn and you can play an additional land. I think I might actually like that a little bit more. And then if we're talking about swords with just pure damage, how about Sword of War and Peace? You can get a copy of this for just $6.50. Uh, three mana, two to equip, plus two, plus two, pro red, pro white. Uh, it deals damage 
to a player equal to the number of cards in their hand and you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. So this can sort of pour on the damage uh, when you're attacking the biggest threat at the table. A lot of times the biggest threat is the person with the most cards in hand. So when you attack them, you're gonna be dealing the most damage, right? The next non-budget card that's so good is Commander's Plate. A single mana for an artifact equipment, equipped creatures against plus three, plus three, and has protection from each color that's not in your commander's color identity. That means protection from uh, red, blue, black, and green. It, it's, it's really a lot of protection. Equip commander three, equip five. But remember, we can cheat this equip cost. It, it's really good. It's twenty five dollars. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's worth twenty five dollars. But I'm, I said I'd mention some of the good pieces of equipment. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of Shadow Spear, a single mana for legendary artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one plus one. Trample and Life Link. Pay one permanence. Your opponents control, lose Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. Ugh, losing Hexproof and Indestructible is so good, um, but Shadow Spear is just relevant. The lifelink, the trample is so good. I mean, we have a ton of ways to make our creatures big. Colossus Hammer, Black Blade Reforged, Argentum Armor. Let's let's give it some trample. Let's give it some lifelink. Like those become really relevant uh, abilities. So at the core of this deck is Commander Masters cards. You know, some of the fantastic reprints that are expensive now, but are soon gonna be just plummeting in price. You're gonna be able to pick them up very cheaply and easily. Then you supplement it with some of the coolest uh, budget pieces of equipment that happen to synergize perfectly with some of these free equip spells from Commander Masters. We're gonna also supplement with some of the other free equip spells. And then, it just depends on how you want to customize it. Do you want to get your favorite equipment and put it in this deck? You want to just look in your binders over there and find the equipment you have and put it together? I'm telling you, this deck is super fun, very customizable, and it's going to be a powerful, fun to play, explosive budget deck. Check out one of my balanced configurations in the deck list down below. I want to thank you guys for watching this. I want to thank Cool Stuff Inc. There's a sponsor of the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. And remember, you can use the coupon code JUMBO5 to save 5% off your order. Get all of those great equipment spells for cheap. I also want to thank my patrons. They're amazing. Thank you, patrons. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys build amazing equipment decks. Have a great one. Bye-bye.